Hey all, um, welcome to my tutorial on how to design and create uh, doodles uh, for uh, digital doodles. And uh, there's a new trend um, in the art world of uh, adult coloring books, and sometimes I've heard them called uh, grown-up coloring books. They, um, there's actually uh, hardbound books out there that you can buy, but I'm going to show you a tutorial after this one. Um, for how to color them digitally and um, these can be used in um, digital Bible journaling pages they can be used just in digital scrapbooking pages uh, a lot of digital scrapbooking artists sell doodles in their stores uh, for your pages and um, this is a tutorial on how to uh, create a uh, the elements for uh, in a digital format. So this is the digital um, doodle that we're going to be creating uh, through this tutorial. Now I did not doodle this. I am not a good doodler. I got permission from Tara D to uh, use her doodles. Um, I want to share her doodles with you. Um, if you go to doodle through the Bible dot blogs, but bot.com you can find her doodles um, she's a uh, I, I love her doodles she's <laughs> she is so good at doodling and I wish I could do those kind of things but I can't but if you could see um, at the bottom of her uh, each of her pages you can download her pages and currently anyway in full color or in a coloring page and you can actually print them out your kids could print them out and get your coloring books out or your crayons out and um, you know sit and color them in yourself or you can uh, color them digitally which I'm going to show you how to do that uh, if you just right click and I open it up in the new page and you see it comes up in her uh, Dropbox. And then um, once it comes up, this one, right click and save as. And so you can easily get these full color pages. Um, you can print them out or you can use them digitally. So I took one of her pages. You can see she does some fantastic work. Uh, she's so good at relating the verse to her doodles I just am not that creative <laughs> I want to show you uh, this in my elements class at Hummies World uh, are some doodles I made and I thought I had already done this tutorial but I couldn't find it that I guess I intended on doing with these doodles that my son uh, created I think my son did the dragon and my husband did the penguin um, but let's go back here and first I want to show you um, if you're using these uh, PDFs that you can uh, just drag them into Photoshop or Photoshop elements and make sure that this images it comes up default pages make sure the images is selected and uh, click OK and it will open up PDF into your Photoshop so I'm going to close that out because I already have it here on my page. Um, I'm going to just let you peek at this. Uh, this is uh, the same tree that has been colored in digitally. I've got a couple methods. There's lots of methods. I've got a couple methods I'm going to show you in the next tutorial that's going to show you how to color these in digitally. I'm going to go ahead and close that also. So um, let's turn off this final layer and you can see I have her image in. Now when you're doodling um, you're going to uh, make sure that you close your lines. That is probably for digital people one of the most important things for you to do um, say you might be drawing along this line here and you might lift up your pencil and it might get faded at the end as you near the tree you need to either do it as you're actually doodling or do it come back later and close those lines uh, the reason for that is you see like um, 
you know, this is a space. And what digital scrapbookers are going to do is they're going to come in and select that space. And if your space is closed, that's going to make it very easy for us to do. Um, you see, I got this space over here when I did that quickly. But I can get out of that. And now I just have this space selected. Um, you know, the tree trunk. You know, don't make sure you close it over here. Uh, so that I can just do that and grab that very quickly. Uh, so if, even if you don't do digital, but you're offering it for digital people, make sure you close your spaces. And then, of course, the other thing is your pen. I have no idea what pen or marker Tara is using, but whatever it is, it's the right kind. Um, and I'm sure there's probably multiple kinds of writing implements. <laughs> Threw out a nice big word for you there. <laughs> Writing implements that you can use to um, uh, to draw your doodles, but uh, just pick them up and test them on your paper. You know that you don't want a very light uh, or thin line. You need something that's dark like this and not too thick, but not too thin. You just have to kind of play around till you get it there. Um, and and find the right right thing to draw with um, and you want to make sure you use white paper because that's going to make it much easier to create your doodles now this one is on a full coloring book page but I'm sure if Tara was just doing this to make a doodle uh, for digital people um, she would uh, have uh, kept this away from the sheep you know, and she probably would have enclosed this tree over here, but I'm just, just working with what I had. You can, let's go back. You see my final image? I did go back, and that sheep is out of there, and I did go back and enclose this. Um, I, I copied this and flipped it and put it on there to finish it. So it's actually still her drawing. I just uh, finished it. Uh, so what I did to get this out of this particular drawing was to get my polygonal lasso tool and I simply drew like this and then hit, uh, make sure I'm on the right layer, hit control J and you see it copied it onto another layer and then I had to get rid of all this stuff. Like I said, if you're drawing on purpose for a uh, digital um, you're not going to have to do these steps because you're not going to have all this other uh, stuff. So get your eraser tool and I just, well you can see there I erased too much. This took a little bit of time but I erased the black. And goodbye little, you know, sheep. And I'm not going to sit here and do this because I already have it for you. And this is what I came up with. So I'm doing this tutorial in the full version of Photoshop, but you can also do it. All these tools are in Photoshop Elements. There are some that are not in Photoshop Elements that uh, do make your life a little easier if you're doing the doodles. So I wanted to do it in the full program so I could show those extra steps if you have the full program. If you don't, you can still do it in Photoshop Elements and um, just uh, find the same tools in your interface. I'll be sure to note when something I'm doing is only in Photoshop. So we have uh, this here and now we have to get rid of uh, the white. So the next, there's several ways of getting rid of the white, but first um, I'm going to recommend darkening up the black edges and making sure the white is pure white. You can do that by getting a levels adjustment. So click the new adjustment layer, levels, and then um, making sure the white is pure white and the dark is dark by moving the sliders. This one should be all the way to the right. And you can see how this, if when I move the black one, it's really darkening up. Oh, now we're getting too far. That 
does not look good, of course. So um, when you move the black one over, you can see that the black lines are getting darker. I'm going to hit the eye so you can see the before and the after. So you see how that really uh, defined the lines. So um, that is a very good trick. And then I just hit uh, Shift, Control, Alt, E. And that put it all, put both of those layers on a new layer. Whatever's visible, it puts on a new layer. So make sure you only have uh, the layers, the two layers that you're working with. So here's my new one, my new layer. Um, at this point, um, See, here's my previous layers, and this is my previous that I worked on. I just wanted to see the step. So um, now we have uh, this here, and we have to get rid of um, the white. I want to show you another technique in case you don't want to use that shortcut. So we have this here. Another technique you can do, and you want to save your steps along the way is to hold down your control key and highlight both of these layers and then um, instead of hitting shift control alt e you can do this uh, now once you have both layers active drag them to the new layer icon and you can see it duplicated them and then you can right click and merge layers and so that does the same effect as the control Shift, Control, Alt, E. Um, that's the purpose is we want to combine the levels and the original layer into a merged layer to work with. Um, and you can do that in either method and it keeps these originals here in case you want to go back and redo it. In case you mess up this one because <coughs> we're going to be permanently removing the white. If you mess it up you can always go back and get this. Okay, so we're working on this layer and um, now we just need to remove the white and if your white is white enough and your dark is dark enough you can start by getting the magic eraser tool and um, you want to make sure contiguous is unchecked because you want it to get all white everywhere. Wherever you click down you want it to get rid of the white everywhere. And so I'm going to click down and just like that it is all gone. Um, but uh, I'm going to hit control Z. Um, I'm actually going to copy this so I got another one to work with. If you're in Photoshop the full version only you can do this trick which actually works um, really well uh, to uh, because sometimes these uh, lines you can see can have uh, faded white going out for them depending on what kind of pencil you used um, and using uh, the magic eraser uh, might leave a kind of a feathered faded white and so this works well if you have the full version get go to your channels now if you don't have channels you can find it by going view uh, not view window and clicking channels and it will open up that window but I already had mine right here and you can see it's got all the channels selected just simply hit this icon here I'm not sure what it's for load channel as selection and I just simply hit that and you can see it made a selection I'm going to go back to my layer make sure I'm on the correct layer and hit the delete key and that actually if you have the full version of Photoshop works excellent um, but I'm going to go back and work with this because uh, I want to make sure Photoshop Elements users can um, do this. So we're clicking with the uh, magic eraser. And now if you want to uh, solidify your lines a little more, this is recommended. 
in that you hit control J on your keyboard so we've made a duplicate of the layer and um, then go up here and hit multiply and um, I don't know let's see this is before and this is after so you can see that makes your lines much thicker you see how this line has the light gray on the edges uh, that is what I was suggesting using the channels if you have the full version of Photoshop elements eliminates and see here this is the one I made using the channels and it's not got those um, you know as many gray edges so you can almost skip this step if you're if you use the channels to get rid of the white but since we're not and we're pretending we're in Photoshop elements this is an important step that you want to do is to duplicate that layer and then change the blending mode to multiply and you can see how that fills that in you can even duplicate it again and you see it makes it even darker again if you need to do that and then what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the layers this time we I did three and then right click and merge those layers now the first thing I noticed after this you have to make sure that you have all nice clean pixels and you can see the first thing I notice is my bounding box has gone way out here that means I've got some stray pixels out here now we need to make sure we clean up those stray pixels um, so the best way to do that is to add a uh, border or a stroke so I'm going to click on the layer styles and add a stroke and I'm going to change it to some wild color like a bright green and I'm going to bring it up to well it's an inside you want to make sure you have an outside and I'm going to bring it up you know just to about you know five you can do less uh, you can do two three four five six somewhere in there now you're gonna see all this stuff that I missed out here it's time to grab that eraser tool and get rid of it it makes all that stuff and you're gonna want to zoom in see and get all this stray stuff you can see here right there is uh, you know an extra pixel sticking out so I'm just gonna click down you just have to zoom around and get rid of and see that looks like anywhere this line does not go straight you've got a stray pixel uh, you need um, the border line to stay the same thickness around your image oh no nope, I did that right no that was the bottom of the tree <laughs> so um, get the big stuff around it pretty easy now see I spy one right here in the middle of the tree but you want this see here's another one you want this to be the same thickness oops same thickness um, green the green border to be the same thickness and I see it isn't here so I'm just gonna click down there and there's one in here so I'm gonna use my bracket key and make it smaller to grab that one so just go along all your lines and make sure it's the same thickness everywhere and then there's no stray dots anywhere Oop, I took too much of that see here's a I, I tell you what I'm doing to move around <laughs> I've zoomed way far in and every time I hold down my space key you get the hand tool and you can drag you can click down and drag once you get the little hand icon see 
and then you let go of the space bar to get your tool back again. And that's how I am uh, looking around. I forget to, uh, is that needed? Oh yeah, that's, so <laughs> this is a little bit of a time consuming thing to do, but um, that is what's uh, necessary to uh, make sure you get rid of because a lot of times it may be so faint that the um, you know naked eye can't see it but when you add a border to it then um, you can you can see and it brings these things out and you can go back in and clean it up there's one up here <coughs> you would take time to go around the whole thing um, and clean those up with the eraser tool. So that's an important step. And then when you're done, you can right click and um, clear layer style and you will have your finished doodle. And um, my finished doodle is up here. Um, Yeah, I think that's about all you have to do to get your finished doodle. You can see if I go back to the move tool, um, I can get on that layer. My bounding box goes right up to it. Now the now the next key is to save your doodle once you get it all done. And um, I have an action that does this, but uh, and I think you can get that action for Photoshop elements users too if you want to write me I can tell you who to buy it from because I can't remember off the top of my head or I would tell you uh, or you can simply uh, get your crop tool and you know your crop tools gotten a lot better it kind of snaps into place um, you're going to what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to bring it right up to the edges and then you're going to want to bring it out just a few pixels you see um, these lines from the transparent area kind of help guide you to just drag it out just a little bit so you can do it this way if you have Photoshop elements and no um, action and this would be a great way to do it and you can just use your crop tool and get it close but not quite all the way in there and click OK and then do file save as and in your drop down box choose PNG for ping and um, rename it whatever you want to name it I would suggest you see I named it Terra D I would suggest putting your name on it first and then um, if you're if you're putting it in a kit then you would put your kit name in it and then you name what the element is in this case tree um, I kept the name of her page that I had downloaded so that's how you make the doodles and then you would share that PNG I'm gonna undo for those that are using Photoshop um, you can there's an easier way to trim and this is actually what that action does you can go to uh, I think it's image and then trim and then choose transparent pixels so we're choosing to get rid of all the transparent pixels um, around it and then just like that it crops it down in for you but now um, in general we don't want it to be so close to the edge I mean you could leave it that way but most of the digital scrapbookers designers have leave it a little bit away from the edge and so now you have to expand that and that's easy enough to do image canvas size and if you 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 could try to just add manually you know, uh, three tenths of an inch to each of these, but it's easier to hit the word relative and then type in 0.03 to each of them because we're doing 0.03 of a pixel and then click OK and you can see all the way around the edges it just added 0.03 of a pixel just so uh, there it's not right up to the edge 
and then you do your file, save as, your ping. So if you're in the full version of Photoshop, that's how you would crop it. The easiest way to crop it um, to get it, uh, but those that those things aren't in Photoshop Elements. In Photoshop Elements, you just have to grab your crop tool and get it as close as you can. Uh, so that's how you would make um, your doodles for digital designs to give away or to sell.